Hey, hey, everybody, it's Monkey Puzzle, and welcome to episode number 74 of Monkey Wrench and the Beast. Hanging out over the top of the twin villages here, one there and one over there, and the connection we've made in between. I haven't played too much Feed the Beast, actually, since my last episode here. Um, been playing a lot of vanilla, did a bunch of Inferno Mines, and also been getting back to my vanilla server quite a bit. Uh, horses are really fun, <laughs> I have to admit, and uh, there's lots of new incentive to load new chunks and to go caving and get horse armor and name tags and stuff like that. So I've been doing a lot of that, hanging out with all the cool fellows over on uh, our server, Axis Mundi. Uh, but when I've been here, I've been playing with this. Uh, you saw me build this the last episode. The chicken nugget maker, chicken thingy do, whatever we want to call it. And I've made a few changes. Uh, one is I've streamlined the thing, uh, lowered the profile of the chicken chooser part. Uh, probably should go through it again real quick. Uh, oh, and it's triggering right now. So here we go. All the chickens that are being uh, bred on that pad get teleported up to here and about well, it's not quite 50-50 because that's not very long enough to hold them all, so some get pushed that way. But a bunch of chickens get chosen to uh, get slaughtered over here by the melee turtle. And their uh, chicken carcasses and feathers. The feathers go in here. You see I've got quite a bit by now. And the, uh, the chicken bodies are getting dumped in the infernal furnace. This very cool thumbcraft thing all animated and everything. And, yeah, nice old wooden golem. He cleans it all up for us, puts them in here, and I've got, I've added uh, brains and jars uh, there and there to pick up some of that XP that's being generated by all this. So one of the things I wanted to show you is uh, the results. <laughs> that's pretty nuts. Uh, I've been uh, fine-tuning it and... Uh, you know, letting it run in between the server, not too much, but uh, yeah, it's very effective. And we're on our next chest now of chicken and chicken nuggets. Um, in here, I've changed it to grass. Before, we had a whole floor of transposers that were, uh, besides being ugly and industrial looking, which is not the goal uh, for this series, uh, even though we want the industrial stuff to be kind of hidden behind the scenes and things to look good. Um, so now we've got a nice grass floor anyway, uh, but the eggs are still getting sucked up. Oh, and the other problem with the transposers was that the chickens were glitching up and down into them and it was just not satisfying. Uh, and once in a while they were actually glitching through them too. Um, but the eggs are getting sucked up and sent out through this dispenser here as we get them. So what's happening now is instead of the transposers, with the, uh, whatchamacallum, those red power pipes, the, uh, oh, you know what I'm talking about. The pneumatic tubes, of course. We've got uh, obsidian pipes being powered with redstone engines. And I probably don't need this many redstone engines, but I wanted to just speed it up as much as possible. Plus, I have tons of redstone engines laying around since I'm doing everything with autarkic gates. So yeah, the obsidian pipes are actually pulling the eggs from above. And I learned a lot about how that works, so I'll show you in a second. Um, but yeah, there's the uh, Mistcraft crystal portal that the chickens are getting uh, uh, pushed with water into. It's sending them up to that junction of the chicken chooser. And I've got this on automatic now, and that's how I've got so much I can actually walk away from it. I've been uh, playing oops, uh, with the timing of this timer and at this point I've got it at about 2300 seconds which is like 38.33 minutes um, still messing with that uh, up here the you can see the chickens go from about 80 chickens to about 120 chickens uh, oh my engine's been on this whole time why don't you guys tell me uh, so let me see right now we're at 77, 80, about 80 chickens, and then they'll build up over the course of the next 38 minutes, and then a bunch of them will get turned into chicken and chicken nuggets over there. So that's been a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and what I learned about obsidian pipes 
And I just showed you once, but I had a little coughing fit in the middle, so let me show you again. That's what I get for trying to eat a sandwich and record at the same time. So obsidian pipes, let's say that's our obsidian pipe. They have a normal range, unpowered, of there. The thing has to get to the block right uh, in front of it. I'm not sure if it's directional or not that way. It must be something to do with the way the pipe is coming from it. Um, but if you power it, uh, you put a redstone engine or a more powerful engine on it, like a biogas or a magmatic or a combustion engine, you increase the range. So with a uh, redstone engine, you get an extension of the range of the obsidian pipe like that. So it doesn't increase on the same level. It extends it out uh, sort of like an upside down pyramid. Um, and it doesn't matter if there's blocks in between. Uh, it will pull here. It will pull slightly from above there with redstone engines powering from it, but it's very erratic and not reliable. But if you put a more powerful engine on it, like I was saying, uh, then you extend the range to this effectively. Uh, one more block away from the obsidian pipe, you get this. And just pretend I filled all that in there too. So you have to pull the pipe back from the area you're trying to retrieve the items from in order for it to work. You can put, like I, like I did, uh, any kind of block in between. Um, so we just did up to this level with the obsidian pipes and the redstone engines. So that's really cool. I know a lot more about that now than I did before. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what I've been doing here and show you how many we've got before I start using them to trade with the villagers, even though uh, probably won't have too significant of an impact on our stock at this point. So, uh, yeah, I should probably think about starting to eat chicken now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to take those and I'm going to go trade with these miscraft thaumaturgists, the wizards, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I'll probably do some more things here too off camera. I'm going to build a few more houses and just do a bunch of trading stuff that you guys don't need to do all the details of, see all the details of. Um, and the other thing I'm going to go do right now, and I'm going to show you first. Oh, come on. Let me open the door. All right. <laughs> I'll go this way. <laughs> Got to fly so I don't go through that portal. Uh, let me see. Actually, I want over here. Can I get over here? Yes. I gotta move these things. At the bees, uh, our third round of tree breeding is in the state it was last time where every single leaf has been pollinated with our new trees. We got our hill cherries and our bull pines and our teaks and and uh, what else? Those um, silver limes and uh, the mundane larches. Yeah, the mundane larches. So they're all in here mixed up with the vanilla trees again. So I'm going to go through here with my Thaumium grafter and collect all these up and see what we get. Uh, every one of these should give us a new sapling. And some of these will be, some of these will be uh, new. Some of them will be old. Um, but I bet I'm wagering we're going to at least get walnuts this time. So we'll see. Anyway... I'm going to mess around with those two things over at the village and over here, uh, put some hours in, and then I'll get back to you and I'll show you the results, and then we'll figure out what else we're going to do with this episode. Well, they look pretty interesting all naked like that, but I appreciate having all the new kinds of wood. I have to say the cherry is still my favorite. I know it's just a red birch, but uh, something about it. I really like it. And uh, I have to say, the sec my second favorite, favorite log is the uh, mundane larch, which I don't think is so mundane. Also turns out it's one of the tallest trees uh, as far as stacks of logs. Anyway, let me show you the results. Uh, remember, this was the results of our first crossing, and out of that we got the mundane larch and the silver lime, besides renaming all the, uh, the vanilla ones, which are no longer vanilla. They have been changed by forestry. And then these were the results of our second crossings. And out of these, uh, where are they? We got uh, lots more mundane larches and silver limes. And then the new ones were uh, the cherry 
and the bull pine and the teak. So now in our third crossing, which is all up here, uh, here's all the vanilla looking ones, but these are all hybrids uh, mixed with each other or other ones. This one is still uh, normal, um, but the uh, traits didn't change. That's one of the things we're going for too, besides new kinds of trees, is modifying these traits. Uh, lower, lower, lowest, lowest for yield and sappiness. Uh, saplings up here uh, are basically say how many saplings they drop. And then sappiness is about how much fuel those saplings give. So that's the two main things we're looking for here is high saplings and high sappiness because that has to do with how much power we can generate. And uh, honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference because uh, we're producing saplings way faster than we can use them as it is. But uh, it's just something to play with, something to look at. Anyway, um, got lots more mundane larches. Most of these are crossed with other kinds. Over here, these are just straight up mundane larches there. And same with the silver limes, lots more of them, mostly all crosses. These are just silver lime. There's some cherries in here because I couldn't fit them all in here. <laughs> so, and we got cherries this time, which I was showing you before. Uh, I'm not hungry yet. I'm curious to see if I can eat them. I'm not sure what you can do with the cherries. There's no recipes shown as far as getting oil or any juice or anything from them. I bet you can get juice, but I have no idea, uh, really. Um, but uh, yeah, these are the only ones that are just cherry. These are all crosses with other stuff. And then over here we got teak. Uh, these are the, the straight teaks, all crosses. And ooh, lost my bearings there. The bull pines and so on. Oh, these are the ones that are just bull pines. And then we the new trees we got, drum roll, are sequoias. Kapox or Capox or however you, I'm not familiar with this kind of tree, balsa and common walnut. So that's very cool. Uh, so we did get walnut, but to grow walnut, I think you need a two by two planting. So we still need two more walnuts before uh, we can actually get a walnut tree. We can get balsa and, and, and Kapox, Kapox and sequoias. You got to plant three by three, uh, but we're set for that as well. We can grow one of them. Uh, so let me uh, clear all these logs out and we'll do some more tree planting. Okay, did all that. And down here in this chest, I've got all the logs that we've gotten so far and all their associated planks. So we're getting a lot of new options for building a lot of different colors and there's more to come. And also, by the way, I had to... Uh, treealize all these by hand with the treealizer. I built the uh, treealizer block for him, um, but it doesn't seem to work. If anybody knows how to make it work, let me know. I thought, I assumed it would need honey, um, but it didn't. Uh, it, will, it won't accept it. And when you look in it, all it's got is this little thing. And if you put something in it, uh, nothing seems to happen. So I have no idea uh, if this is just bugged out and it doesn't work or I don't know what to do with it but uh, yeah if anybody got any hints on that so we can't grow the uh, walnut yet but we can grow these other kinds so let me just grow them out uh, real quick and we'll get some saplings from them uh, so we don't use them all up in the breeding and also just see what they look like so first I'm super curious to see what a se sequoia does is this going to be huge or what so let's check it out and so far nothing's happening maybe it just doesn't respond to bone meal uh, the wiki says three by three I don't think these flowers and things would really mess it up but uh, maybe let's take it somewhere else maybe they are keeping it from growing uh, did I get them out? oh they're in the forester's backpack so let me go someplace where there aren't all those flowers because I don't want to knock them all down. They're pretty. Uh, need a big flat space. And it's, it's still daytime, isn't it? 
Uh, I'll find some space. Here we go. This ought to work. So let's get them back. And let's do our three by three. Far away enough from those blocks over there that that shouldn't be disturbing it. And apparently, oh, <laughs> holy moly. Okay, there's the sequoia. And it's a big sparse leafed one. <laughs> wow. Okay. So let's see if the grafter uh, really works as far as uh, guaranteeing a sapling drop. And where is it? Uh, there we go. It does work. So I'm going to collect a whole bunch of saplings from this. And I'll meet you for the next growing. Got down far enough, you can see the cross section of the logs, and they're red like redwood. I would start attacking this with the advanced chainsaw, but I think this is a job for the axe of the stream. <laughs> All right, see you guys in a bit. Oh, and by the way, the axe of the stream now has repair two on it. So, it's not going to run out. Whew, that took a while. And let's see what we got. From that tree, we got, whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six, almost six stacks of wood. <laughs> we got plenty of sequoia saplings now, too. So, let's go plant some more. Uh, oh, I can grab these up too. I guess I might as well do them here while I'm up here. We got the balsa sapling. Let's check that out. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Got some gray wood. And uh, let's uh, go up here. See what the cross section of the log looks like. Okay, it's very gray. So I'm going to harvest this guy. I wonder if they're always so tall, straight up and down. I guess that's pretty likely. All right, see you after I harvest this one. And the last new one that we can grow today is the Kapok. I should look that up and figure out how the heck to pronounce that. Ooh, okay, and it comes with vines on it. It's definitely some sort of jungle-ish tree. It's got a little branch <laughs> right there. And uh, let's see, where is my chainsaw? Let's go ahead and take a look at, oh, they're very green. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna grab this one down too. Should I fill up on cherries? <laughs> uh, that's gonna take too long. So just a sec. All right, so time to do some more breeding now that we've got some more saplings. And oh, by the way, I arranged this. I got to put the saplings for the vanilla ones in here, but we have all these kinds of wood now. So, and it's only going to increase. Uh, the bull pine is the same as the spruce. So we didn't get a new wood from that, um, but all the other ones did. And then the walnut, we're waiting to see what it will give us. So we'll keep this going as we go along, but there's a lot of new colors, new textures. Uh, I like it. So uh, we need to get two more walnuts. And to do that, turns out that walnuts are silver lime and hill cherries. So we got those. And walnuts are going to be necessary for a lot of the other breeding we're going to do. But we can uh, breed two other trees. So these are going to be walnuts. Now you can cross uh, kapok and teak saplings. And that's going to give us a myrtle ebony. I'm finally looking this stuff up so I can take it the last step rather than being random. Uh, but I hadn't looked it up until this point. So we're going for a Myrtle Ebony from the K Kapok and the, and the Teak. I'm just going to call them that because that sounds the best to me. And then the Balsa and the Kapok, that's going to give us a Desert Acacia. 
Now, I'm not sure if those are the same as the acacias that we already have back in the savanna, uh, but we'll do it anyway uh, and make sure it's the same thing. So we'll start with the silver lime. Uh, let me see. That's the thing I want the most. Um, so we'll go ahead and maybe just put those down the middle. So we'll do maybe like cherry, silver lime, cherry, silver lime, cherry. <laughs> and uh, oh, I guess that's not actually the middle. That's the side. That's fine. And so that should guarantee, hopefully, that we get some more walnuts. Uh, we could probably fit some more silver limes in there. Uh, but let's put those up for now. And then we're going to need to do K-Pox and teaks and k-pox and balsa so sounds like the k-pox are the common thing in that so why don't we do uh let's see i don't know balsa k-pox and then we'll do uh teak uh, k-pox and i'm just going to keep alternating it something like that and let's grow them all out. Oh, yeah. Love me those cherries. Especially when they're purple. <laughs> all right. So that's going to get us more walnuts, hopefully. Uh, and then over here is K-Pock. Yo! <laughs> hopefully that works so tall. And Acacia. And hopefully the bees don't have vertical limits. And Teak. And K-Pock and uh oh that's the balsa and k -Pock and so on teak k -Pock, balsa k -Pock. okay so that's a really interesting looking setup this time <laughs> i'm gonna let those stew and pollinate uh maybe add a few more uh cherries and silver limes over here just to guarantee the walnuts one other important part of this that i didn't mention before is that after you grow all the trees out it's important to uh, go and make sure that uh, each apiary is exposed to the sky otherwise the apiary won't work and you won't get pollination Well, once again, I had plans to do many other things in this episode, but uh, half an hour doesn't take long to fill, especially with all this new content. But I love breeding the trees. I hope you guys enjoy it, too. Every time I get some new trees, I feel like I've got an update to the game. It's, it's you know not so easy to get new blocks and new things, new creatures, new plants in uh, regular old vanilla Minecraft. Um, but uh, before I sign off, uh, there's one more tree we can breed. There's one called a willow that you can get, but it has to be done in a damp biome. There's one other jungle tree that has to be done in the jungle, uh, but we can't get that yet. Um, but we can go for the willows. Up here, we're in the green hills biome, and green hills biome happen to be damp. So I set up these beehives up here. Let's put some, uh, I keep calling them beehives, but uh, you know, apiaries, whatever. And we're going to make them industrious bees because they have the fastest pollination. So we're going to just set up this rocky queen to become industrious. Got the apiarist pipe and the uh, target gate and the whole, uh, you know, basic setup for this. And so over here, going to do the same thing. Uh, actually might need some flowers for them pretty soon. Uh, oh, I needed to divide these guys up. And it's nighttime, and I'm not lit up up here. So I'm going to actually turn it to day by going to sleep. I'll be right back. OK, made it day. And we got a couple flowers up here already, uh, which actually probably all going into my forester's backpack. We got a heck of flowers here. So uh, let's just put uh, roses and yellow flowers because we know they'll work. I know the other ones probably will too, but uh, the rocky bees uh, won't need them, but uh, pretty soon they'll be industrious and then they'll need the flowers. 
So we got bees going, so we're going to get pollination. And to get willows, we need oaks, which we already have, which is why I put the apiaries there and there. And then we're also going to need uh, birches, which are now called silver birches, and silver limes. Everything's silver. <laughs> That's all right. So let's see. Let's put a silver lime there and a birch there and uh, maybe another silver lime and another birch. And uh, uh, just to mix it up, let's put uh, one more oak. And uh, let's see if I can grow all these. You and you and you. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, let me not forget this part. Oh, I can't even get in here. Yeah, it would stop working in a second if I left that there. So definitely got to keep the uh, top of the apiaries clear. So we should get a willow out of that. Uh, but let's try it over here too. And we'll get a bunch of willows. So let's see, silver lime and a birch. And oh, silver lime. And... I get knocked those out of the way because I know the birch won't grow with them. And a birch. So that should do it. Uh, not going to get the results today, of course. Um, but just wanted to get that set up. One more thing we can do. Anyway, I hope this tree breeding was fun for you. It certainly is fun for me. And next time, so many things I can do, so many projects in store. Um, I think what's been on my mind for next time is we need to make a blaze farm. And yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm excited about the fact that uh, in the version I'm playing, you can still use oil and the nether uh, for pushing uh, blazes around. So that's going to be a cool way. I've made the, you know, the vanilla kind of blaze farm several times before. So I've done that, been there. Um, but yeah, we can make a new one. Eventually, I think I'll make my first soul shard uh, for the blaze farms, but I want to at least challenge myself. I don't want to break blaze spawners. That's just sacrilege to me. And, uh, you know, I don't want to, like, kill one blaze and then combine it with a soul shard that's full of something else. I actually want to kill 1,024 blazes, uh, like the... Uh, it's, you're supposed to do to be able to get that shard. And I don't even think I'm going to use the, um, oh, what's the sword that you use or the enchantment on the sword that works with the soul shards. I don't even remember. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, the soul stealer enchantment, which this sounds terrible to me anyway. <laughs> so we're going to do it legit, and that will be next time. But don't worry. I'm not going to kill 1,024 blazes one at a time. I got a plan. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll do next time. Um, and, uh, yeah, see you then. So I hope you join me. This has been Monkey Puzzle, Monkey Wrenching the Beast. Bye-bye.